Hi guys, hey thanks for joining me today. Um, today I'm going to try to do a quick painting of the Smoky Mountains. Okay, I got my typical 18 by 24 stretch canvas, which I went ahead and prepared before the video started. What I did this time though was, I went ahead and did the bottom half with a white primer, and the top half with a 50-50 mix of a white primer and a clear primer. Okay, and the reason being is because I want the sunrise to be like a nice vivid colors and really pop. But the bottom half of the Smoky Mountains being, I want them to be like misty and kind of like foggy. So that's what we're going to try to do it that way. Typically what I do is I do the whole canvas with um, the white primer. This time I want the colors to really shine and pop this time. So we're going to try it this way and see if it works. Okay. Um, so I didn't do this halfway. What I do is I brought the, the white primer to about here. And when I'm looking at an angle, I can kind of see the difference here. So I want my sunrise to be... To the top quarter and then the bottom um, three quarters is going to be the rock or the I'm sorry not the Rocky Mountains the Smoky Mountains okay uh, you don't want this canvas divided right in half because if you do it in half it doesn't look pleasing to the eye so you kind of want to have it offset a little bit okay so let's go ahead and get started so for this one I'm going to use just a little tiny bit of yellow and again I got different uh, yellows like a blue red green and so on um, but what we're going to do is go ahead and maybe we'll have the sun rise being a little bit off center. Okay. Like I said, we want this color to really pop. So we're going to go ahead and just apply this and kind of work its way out. And we want the brightest part to be in the middle. Okay. And we can go ahead and do this in all different directions here. We're not trying to get a a good mix. We're going to just try to go ahead and have it so it's going to be the sunrise, different colors and everything. Um, without washing the brush, I'm going to go right into a darker yellow this time. And again, I'm going to just go ahead and keep tapping it, try to get an even distribution of color on there. And this time, let's go ahead and we'll do a little bit over on this side, come back around. And what I'm doing here, I'm just doing little tiny X's. Okay, X's will actually blend better if you do X's than if you were to go ahead and just do straight horizontal strokes. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put some of this color on. And we'll worry about blending here in a few minutes. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and do a little bit of red. Now this red is very powerful, it's going to really overtake your whole canvas, so don't use a lot of it. I'm going to go ahead and actually mix it in with some of my yellows too. Kind of dull it out a little bit. What I want to try to do is have the, the corners darker so your eyes drawn to the sun to the sunrise. So let me get another brush here. And for this I want to use a little bit of the blue and a little bit of my red. Okay, I'm actually going to use these colors quite a bit for the actual Smoky Mountains, but for this we're going to go ahead and use this up in the top corners too. Okay, the one thing you want to be careful of is that you don't mix the blue with the yellow because if you mix the blue and the yellow you're going to get green. Okay. So just make sure you have enough of the red where you're not going to do the, the blending. Now with a clean brush, I'm going to go back into my brightest part and kind of start blending outwards. Okay, and again, just small X's. You don't want to go outside of your bright spot and then go ahead and come back into the center. So we're going to go ahead and do it this way first. Knock off any of the excess paint. And then go ahead back into the center and blend out to the corners.
drop a brush, don't, don't use it without cleaning it with uh, paint or anything first. Now very lightly, we'll go back and forth, kind of blend it all together. And let me go ahead and get my other paintbrush washed here. For this, I'm just using Odo's paint thinner. I have a bucket set up with a screen on the bottom of it where I can go ahead and scrub all the paint off of it. And then I also have a, a beater box where I can go ahead and, and really dry it off well. Let me do my other one real quick while I'm over here. You have to make sure you have a good dry brush. <laughs> I dropped it again. You have to make sure you have a good dry brush because if not, you're gonna go back through here and actually start blending colors together, and it's not very good. So one more time. I must have had a piece of the butterfingers or something. Let me get these couple of brushes all washed out while I'm over here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make the, the tops a little bit redder, so I'm going to go back into my alizarin crimson. I want this to be more of a purple color. That's looking too blue to, for me. So I'm going to go back into this, go back up into the corners. And again, with this being the um, half liquid clear, you will have the colors a lot more vivid on this than you would a normal one. Okay, and you can go ahead and play around with this a little bit, mix some colors in. Now with this leaning more towards the, like the red side, you don't have to really worry too much about turning green on you. Okay, again the, the clean dry brush, we're going to go ahead and start from the center out, small crisscrosses. Once you go up into the dark colors, you gotta smack the brush off, get all those loose paint off again. Because if you come back into this, you're gonna bring all that color back into the center, okay? So you wanna make sure you don't do it that way. Actually, that's a little bit. because I do want these colors to blend a little bit, but I do also want the middle to be nice and bright. Okay. Now I have this really soft blender brush. This is really good for um, making real nice transformations in colors. So if I use this brush, I can go back through and just kind of like work it back together to get rid of all the brush strokes. Again, make sure the brush is clean though. <laughs> that one wasn't too clean. Let me wash it. Okay, so you see what I did there? I didn't have a clean brush. I came back into the center here and I brought some of that uh, purple color back into the center here. So you can fix that easily by taking a good clean brush and just work it in. Reminds me of what uh, Bob Ross used to say, how you don't, you just have happy accidents, you don't have mistakes, happy accidents. You get a little hair, just flick it off the side. Take my clean blender brush this time, and again, go ahead and work your way out. Clean it again. You want to make the same mistake twice? 
Learn from your mistakes. And we are going to have some clouds in here too, so why don't we go ahead and do that. For the clouds, we're going to go ahead and make that purple color again. We're going to use more blue this time though. We want a nice lavender color. If you're not sure what color it is, get a little bit of the white. Mix it in. A little bit too red, or I'm sorry, too blue, any more red in there. So this one I'm going to do is, since this is going to be like our, our brightest spot right here, I'm going to go ahead and have some nice cloud formations coming around here. Keep that brush moving. Don't stay on one spot starting on the paint up. Okay. Take a big two inch brush. Two inch brush really does well for the clouds to, to make them look more realistic. What you want to do is when you're doing these clouds, and you're going to go through and try to soften them, you want to leave the tops of the clouds alone. And we're going to just go ahead and blend the bottoms of them. Okay, you know what I mean by that. Okay, with a dry brush, just use the very corners of it, and we're gonna go ahead and mix the bottom of it. Okay, you don't wanna do anything with the top. Okay, and by doing this, you're gonna go ahead and like fuzz out the bottom and keep the top of them looking like clouds, like, like wispy clouds. We want the bottoms to be blended, but the tops we don't. Same thing on this side. Not touching the very tops, just the bottoms. One more time. Now we have to lift the clouds up so they look light and fluffy. So make these like like half C's. Okay, but you're just doing it very lightly. Okay, by doing it this way, you're gonna go ahead and, and give the cloud the appearance of being very light. Okay. And then again, real softly, go over the whole painting. This time I'm going to go ahead and do a different one. What I want is I want to have a couple little stragglers in here. Just like that. Let me wash my brush, make sure it's clean. Too, since it's sitting here. Let's get that cleaned off too. I'll probably be using the blender brush when we go ahead and create the mist in between the layers of mountains. 
So I might as well go and have that cleaned off too. Again, just the corner of the brush. I'm just trying to stir the paint up a little bit. Same thing over here. Don't touch the top, just the bottoms. And then lightly go over the whole thing. Okay. Now for our Smoky Mountains. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna add some highlights on these clouds. So with a clean fan brush, I'm gonna go ahead back into some of the yellow. It's not gonna take a lot. Mix these together. And with the sun coming this way, we can go through here and put a little bit of sparkles. On the bottom of these clouds. Any place you think the sun is going to hit. On this side, I'll probably be on the bottom here. Maybe some light coming through the sides here. them together a little bit. Okay, so we can start doing these mountains. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use some of my blue and some of my red. Okay, I do want this to be more on the blue side. Typically, you see the, the Smoky Mountains, they are blue in, in appearance. So we're going to go ahead and make a pile of that. Make sure you're turning the paint over when you're, when you're mixing it. Okay, you want a solid color. You do not want the streaks this time. Sometimes the streaks are good when you're doing mountains or rocks. But since we're doing not necessarily like the, the big mountains with the snow on it, I want to see what color this is. I want to take a little bit of the white, mix it together. Okay, that's actually a good color. So what I'm going to do though, I'm going to divide this up. What's going to happen is, or the mountains in the background are going to be very light. And then the closer you come, the darker they're going to get. Okay, so I need white. So we have an appearance, or appearance of distance. And what I'll do is every time I make a layer of mountains, I'll go back into this color and make it a little bit darker. The closer you come to the front, you're going to have a darker in appearance. Okay? So. Let's go ahead and use that now for our mountains. I'm going to get my fan brush loaded up with the distant mountain color. And when I do this, I want the mountain to be
something like that. Okay, just rolling hills. All right. Now what we need to do, we need to blend out the bottom of those. So take your two inch brush and we can actually go through here and start moving paint around just like we do for the clouds. We're not touching the top or we just pull this paint down. As you work it down, it's going to mix with that white underlayer and it's going to make mist for you. Okay, so we're going to just keep doing this until we work these mountains into the mist. You have to make sure you pull this down enough because what's going to separate the two layers of hills is going to be the mist. If you don't have the mist, you won't get that uh, depth perception. It's going to look all on top of each other. Okay. It's so not what you can do is go back in the same color but add, pick up a little bit of the blue and we're going to make the next layer a little bit darker okay and you want to leave that misty area in between so let's start here this time okay maybe we'll do a peak like that and maybe it goes like that Go back to your brush. And we're gonna follow this. And we're gonna blend it out. We're not too concerned about trees yet because these are too far back, okay? I'm actually going to make this go up a little bit higher. There's too much white there for me. Okay, again, you have this layer down here that's kind of misty. That's what we're looking for. Next layer has to be a little bit darker. Grab some more of that blue, mix it in. Maybe for this one here, since it is getting closer, maybe we can start seeing some trees. So an easy way to do trees is just flick them up. You want to make sure you're doing this so they're vertical, okay? No matter which way the hillside is going, the trees are always going to be vertical. So just give it a little 
Fuck up. Okay. With your blender. Just gonna do maybe one more. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and back into that blue lavender color. I wanna make this a little more red though. Time this comes down this way. And over here, maybe it. However, you want to do these guys. And again, with this, same thing. If you want to go ahead and make trees, you can. Um, with this layer though, the trees are more prominent. So an easy way to make trees, you can just kind of pull them down. Okay. So if you wanted to go ahead and do trees this way. And what we're trying to do here is change the height and elevation of the trees. You're gonna have some small trees, some big trees, but you wanna make sure that they're all touching. Because if, if they're not all touching, it's gonna give you the appearance of like fence posts. Down here, it doesn't matter, we're gonna blend it out anyway. What you could even do, pick out a couple pine trees here and there that you can go ahead and give it the appearance. Uh, we have more detail on this. Maybe one right, right there. Maybe this one here is going to be the branch is going to bend up. Pine trees are actually pretty easy to do. Just takes a little patience and practice. We're not gonna give any highlights of these trees either because they're too far away to actually get the highlights. Okay. tree so we can maybe like one right over there
the nice thing about this painting, you can always go back and change. Okay. Maybe give him another one. Okay. Take your brush again. We need to create the mist in between. Let's go ahead and you know, let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and do um, some land down here, maybe where we have a cabin or something. Okay. So to do that, if you mix alizarin crimson and some green together, they will make a nice color brown. So I'm actually going to do that, and with my brush, what you want to do is tap into it. When you're tapping, you're, you're touching and pushing a little bit, and you're getting a roll of paint up on the tip of your brush. This time you're just just tap. Oops. Tap a little too hard. Keep dropping the brushes. We're gonna start doing like lay of the land. Then we're gonna go ahead and add some green to this too. So you do the same thing, just add some green and tap it in. Changing these colors up like this, you're actually making it look like it's in layers too. Another one. Again, you can kind of start seeing how there might be like a little hill here. There's a hill on this side coming down. Okay.
you don't want to kill all these like light areas in between. If they're there, they'll add more dimension to your painting also. Brush does not want to stay there. What we're doing here too, this is just the, the, the underlying layer. We're going to come back through here and put trees and everything else on it too. Okay, so this doesn't have to be perfect. Oh, gotta clean that brush off, it's, it's fallen too many times. All right, I think we're good to go. It's funny because um, over the weekend, my daughter was in a play for the high school. Uh, it was Hello Dolly. A couple of my former students asked if I was going to do any more paintings. And I told them I was thinking about doing this for a while, but I really haven't done anything yet. So I decided to get all the paints out and everything else and give it a try. So this is why I'm doing it today. You know, let's, let's go ahead and put a, um, we're going to put a cabin in here. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and get maybe a nice couple of trees on the sides of it and everything. So, go ahead and do some green, some brown, some black. We're just looking for a dark color this time. Okay. Just mix them on the brush, that's all. Maybe we'll say right, maybe right there. And then you go ahead and just start pushing it out of the brush. As you come down, you're pushing harder. You're bending the bristles more. And you can see how it wants to make a pine tree. You know, let's go ahead and do another one. This one will be off like this, maybe. Because, you know, everything in nature is not totally stripping down. And maybe we'll do a couple on this side, too. Um, let's see. Maybe we'll do one right here. Again, just use the corner of the brush and make your first couple. And then as you come down, you're bending the bristles harder and more paint's coming off the brush.
Oh, we're on top of that pine tree. Oh well. We know it's there. So all we need to do, we need to give this some highlights. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and back into some of our yellow, and we'll mix in with some of our green too, okay? We don't want these like to really stand out, but we do have to add some, some highlights. And since it's on this side, the sun's coming from this direction, we'll more highlights on this side. Okay, so we can just, actually, you know what, let's do it this way first. Let's go ahead and add some trunks in there. Trunks are very easy to do. Just scratching them in. Okay. It's those small details like that that really make your painting come to life. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some highlights now. And not every branch needs to have a highlight. Now with the other side, Remember, this is our light source, so this side of the tree is going to be highlighted, not this side. Because we're going to have more highlights on this side. Okay. Okay, so let's put a cabin in here. This is actually taking longer than I thought it was going to take, but let's go ahead and do a cabin maybe right here in the center. Um, no, let's have it offset a little bit. So we want to go ahead and put a cabin in here. So let's go ahead and start by scratching in the roof line. do it this way, if you're removing the paint, at the same time you can look at everything and make sure it's the way you want it. Okay? I'm going to run good and have this come down. Scratch this out. Scratch this out. Okay, I broke my knife off a little bit. When you do these, you gotta make sure the front of the cabin is higher than the back of the cabin. If it's not, it's just the perspective's not, not quite right. Okay. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my brown. And some of my black, and I'm looking just for a dark color. Okay, again, we will put shadows, or these will be my shadows, we'll put the highlights on later. Okay, and this time we do want the marbling look, okay? Cough a little roll of paint, and you can come back through here and put on your roof. side. Okay. 
We can go ahead and add the sides of it. Come back through to this. Again, this is just our base color. Okay. Let's talk to you guys about the, the play Hello Dolly. It's amazing what kind of talent these kids have. They did a fabulous job with it. Um, every one of them, it's a small school district, and to see the kind of talent that these, these kids have is unreal. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and Clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna try to get my lines looking better. Okay. Um, for the roof, we're gonna have a really sparkle. We're going to take some of the, the red and the yellow and mix it, but we're not going to blend it very well. Okay. We want this to, to kind of mimic the sky. Okay. So lightly put the knife blade on there and then just pull down the, in the right direction and you will start making the shingles. Okay. You can bounce the knife along it. If you bounce it, it'll make more of a a texture look. Okay. Um, don't forget this edge here needs a two because this is kind of like sticking out. So just go through and put some of that on there. Make sure your lines are good. Sometimes you can just go back through and put a back edge here so you can kind of follow along. Okay. Now for this side over here, I want this side to be more dark than this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take, ooh, take some of my brown color Mix it in with the red. Okay, still leaving it marble like that. But I can come back through here and put the brown down. Go over here. Put it down. Over here, I'm gonna have a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna take the same color, but I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the yellow to it, and a little bit of the red. what we can do I gotta make sure the roof overhangs the side though
Now, if you were to go ahead and take your knife, and we can actually do some weathered boards in here. And on this side, I'm going to take a little bit of black, and we're going to put a door in here. And the door is just kind of just like that. Okay. Once you do the door, you need to outline it though, because you got to make it stand out a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take that white. And I'm going to have a little tiny roll. And I'm going to just kind of, that's too much. I'm actually going to just go ahead and outline the door frame a little bit. Okay, just like that. Now what I'm going to do is clean out the side of it. Okay, so we know the front's going to be right here. So we can go ahead and get rid of the front. And then this is going to be angled back a little bit. So we can go ahead and angle that back. So you can always change it up. And since I'm not liking the way this side here looks too well, I'm just going to put a tree there. Go back to my green, my brown, some red, and we'll put a tree right there. Again, we need some highlights for it. We'll get more yellow on there too. tree trunk in. But it'll be a little bit closer and have a little bit more detail than the ones further back, so. Now we can do, we can go ahead and add a place for you to get to and from this cabin. So if you're to go ahead and you know start something like let's see. I'll do it this way. going to be our pathway and right up to the door and again if you want to put some highlights on there you could Okay. So I kind of tie all this together. You can take your one inch brush and we need to put some shrubs and bushes all along here. 
because right now this still looks all messy. Okay, so you can go through and when you do it this way, pull the brush in like one direction. Okay, and again, I'm just using different colors so we can kind of get a variety in there. Okay, and you can kind of see there's a little bit of a curve on there. So the curve going up, you can go ahead and pop in some trees. Both sides. to some of those. I think this needs some shrubs at the base of it too. See how this is starting to get like all mixed together? You need to thin this paint down a little bit. The paint's too thick and it's not sticking too well. So we thin it down a little bit. And I'll see how it, it actually sticks better. And you know what? There's still more I can do to this. More I should be doing to it. But in actuality, my family's gonna be coming home soon. And they're gonna be opening the door up. Let me do something here.
Real quick, Vince. Something like that. And I think that's good. My time is way over 30 minutes, as it always is. So we'll just go ahead and sign this one and be done with it. Okay. students who wanted me to paint something there you go hope you enjoy this one take care see you in class